Welcome to the fourth session on peaceful settlement of disputes where I introduce the two main legal mechanisms of settling disputes, arbitration and judicial adjudication. So far, we have covered the most commonly used diplomatic means of settling disputes. They all have in common that the main objective is to find a compromised solution to the conflict and not a legally binding outcome. Now, we will focus on the legal means of settling disputes that are characterized for ending with a binding decision. If the parties do not comply, comply with such a decision, they will be breaching international law and therefore incurring in international responsibility. This video explains the main differences between arbitration and judicial settlement. It then outlines how arbitration operates including specific references to the Permanent um, Court of Arbitration. Arbitration and judicial settlement are the main two forms of settlement of disputes we are referring to in international law when we speak about legal mechanisms. However, there are others that don't fit uh, these categories, but are normally referred to as quasi-judicial means of resolving disputes, and we can find examples before the World Trade Organizations or among human rights bodies. I will say a little bit more in the last session on settlement of disputes when I outline very quickly some uh, settlement of disputes within specialized fields of international law. Let's recall here the points already covered in our second session on the topic of settlement of disputes about the characteristics that, characteristics that define legal means. As it happens with any other means of settling disputes, states must consent to the intervention of the third body, in this case, the arbitral or judicial tribunal. When addressing the International Court of Justice in our next session, I will explain some of the issues that have been raised about attempts to bring states to judicial proceedings circumventing their consent. The most important defining element of legal mechanisms to resolve international disputes is the binding nature of the arbitral award or the judgment for the parties to the dispute. Remember that in international law, case law is not an autonomous source of international law and an arbitral award or a judgment is only binding to the parties to the dispute. They don't act as precedent like it happened at domestic level in common law jurisdictions. The functions of the arbitrators or judges and the proceedings will be regulated by international law. Equally, the decision will be normally based on the application of international law, although the parties can request a decision based on equity. Well, you can find many exceptions to this. The main distinction between arbitration and judicial settlement relies on the permanence of the deciding body and the uh, arbitrators or judges. In the case of arbitration, the deciding body, the arbitrators, are constituted and selected on a temporary basis, normally after the dispute has already started. The final decision is known as arbitral award. Conversely, the judicial court is a permanent body and the judges conforming tribunals also tend to exercise their duties on, the, on permanent basis. Their election is not subjected to the existence of a specific dispute. Normally, they are already established before the dispute exists. The final decision is known as judgment. When states choose arbitration to resolve a dispute, they retain a significant role in deciding the format of the third party settling the dispute. In arbitration, the states parties of the disputes will set up the machinery to handle their controversy. Arbitration is often conducted without publicity and the final outcome, known as arbitral award, may also remain confidential. State parties to the dispute will decide who will be the arbitrators and also which rules they will apply to resolve the dispute. 
These characteristics make arbitration particularly attractive when a stage to the dispute want flexibility, confidential, confidentiality, and specialization. For instance, if the dispute is about investment, investments, the parties can choose arbitrators that are experts in that area of law. So, a state's parties to a dispute will decide the form of that uh, of the arbitral body deciding. For instance, they can decide that the arbitral body is constituted as a collegiate body, as that means a body of several people, a commission consisting of equal members of national arbitrators and then a natural member, that's called umpire, to whom cases can be referred to if the national members cannot agree. I have listed here a few examples of arbitrations that have followed that kind of model. Instead, states may prefer to uh, transfer dispute to a single arbitrator, normally based on how much they trust that person, either because of its caliber or because of, its, of his or her reputation. The main message I want to convey here is that parties are free to decide the shape of the arbitral tribunal and who will be the arbitrators. Conversely, in judicial proceedings, the courts pre-exist and the parties do not have the power to change their composition or how they will operate. In arbitration, the parties are also free to decide the rules that will be applied to the proceedings. For instance, how to resolve disagreements between arbitrators, whether they will hold uh, oral hearings or whether evidence provided by electronic means is permitted. The parties will also normally decide the contours of the dispute to be settled by the arbitrators as well as the rules they should apply to resolve the dispute. State parties may request arbitrators to use a particular set of international rules to resolve the dispute, for instance, a specific treaty, or leave it to the arbitrators to decide the applicable law. State parties can also request that arbitrators make a decision based on equity instead of international law. As I have highlighted now several times, the main um, characteristic in arbitration is the flexibility and still the role of state parties in deciding, in shaping uh, the arbitral tribunal. There are several rules that are commonly used as templates, as models, to govern arbitration procedures. So while states uh, can decide themselves with le which legal framework to use, they can also decide to use one of these uh, templates. They have been included in treaties such as the 1899 and 1907 Hague Conventions or developed by other bodies such as the International Law Commission, the International Law Association or the International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes, among others. The Permanent Court of Arbitration deserves a special mention. Contrary to what the name suggests, Permanent Court, this is not a court but an organization that facilitates arbitration by keeping a list of qualified arbitrators that the states may want to use instead of looking for them themselves. So, in the same way they can use models, the templates that already exist as rules to govern the proceedings, they can also decide to use this list of qualified arbitrators when they want to bring their dispute to arbitration. Therefore, the so-called members of the court is a roster of potential arbitrators states that want to use arbitration can choose from knowing they have already been selected on the basis of their competency to select disputes in the capacity of arbitrators. Among other services, the PCA, the Permanent Court of Arbitration, provides access to ready-made rules of proceedings and secretarial support. This structure aims at maintaining the flexibility and the ad hoc temporary nature of arbitrators combined with the pre-existing institutional framework. This way, state parties resorting to arbitration don't need to set up the full machinery from scratch but decide which part of the already existing institutional framework uh, suits their need. Arbitration is the eldest legal mechanism for settling disputes. 
and remains a popular choice among states. It is also the object of all the new forms of criticisms. The cost can be very high, unlike judges and courts whose regular cost is covered by the institution they belong to, the parties must pay for the arbitrators and every other cost incurred during the proceedings. For instance, if the parties decided to bring their dispute to the International Court of Justice instead, the salary of the judges will be paid by the United Nations. However, arbitrators are fully paid by the states in the dispute. The arbitration centers and persons used as arbitrators tend to be concentrated in very few countries, particularly the United States, the United Kingdom or France. They remain heavily male dominated and overall notorious for the lack of diversity. The arbitration proceedings can also become as long as judicial proceedings and as rigid as judicial proceedings as we saw in our former session in relation to the Beagle Channel where the arbitration proceedings took almost six years and at the end it did not resolve the dispute.